Good morning, everybody. Please have a seat. Welcome to this Sunday service. Before we start, I have some announcements to do. We will start with the birthdays. Uh, on April 26th, it will be Olivia Bourgeois, Al and Jetta Edwards' granddaughter. On the 27th, it's Heather Shepard, Barbara Batten, Carol Jones, and Chris Ryan. On May 5th, it will be our 191st anniversary service, and we have the honor to have Reverend Jean Lebeuf, who will be our guest speaker that morning. And this service will be followed by a luncheon in Memorial Hall. On May 12th, it will be our Mother's Day service, which will take place in the chapel in the hall, preceded by breakfast. And I have a bit of sad news to tell you this morning. Uh, Bob Springer just passed away last night with a short battle with cancer. We just found that out this morning, so uh, we'll have more news when Reverend Alice will get in touch with the family. There's also uh, an announcement in the bulletin. You can read it yourself about the bursary fund. Okay, Alice, when I got the email, I already had a check made for you. <laughs> I guess I have to cancel it now. <laughs> okay, let's get serious now. Let us now come together in our gathering song as printed in your bulletin. It's called Jesus Came Bringing Us Hope. fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thus says the Lord, as a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they are scattered. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all the settlements in the land. And they will come in good living land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. 
I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be among them. I, the Lord, has spoken. And now let us continue singing for the faithful who have answered, which you will find on Voices United, number 707. <laughs> Children, to come in the front, please. Good morning, kids. How are you doing this morning? Still alive? Okay. I have a question for you. Do you kids like music? Do you like singers? Do you? Do you have a favorite singer that you can tell me their name? Which one? Taylor Swift. Do you have one? You? Singer? Who? Who's your favorite singer? You can't remember? Do you have a favorite singer? <laughs> Did you say the same thing, Taylor Swift? Okay. Can you tell me one of the songs that you like that Taylor Swift sings? 
Which one? You need to calm down? Are you saying that you want me to calm down or is that the end of the song? <laughs> okay. Can you tell me some of the words that she sings? Mm. Okay. Well, it's pretty good. So, almost somewhat, some of you know the words from the song, some of you don't. But at least you knew the name of the, uh, the artist and you like music, right? But wait a minute. How many times have you heard your parents or your teachers say to you, you weren't listening? M never? Okay. Maybe you didn't listen though when you were asked to do your homework or your chores. You say never, but I'm sure some of you didn't listen. I don't want to say it, but some of you didn't. So those of you who did not listen, maybe you weren't listening when you were watching TV and when you were called to the dinner table. Do you think that happened? You eat in your living room? You don't eat at the table with your parents? Aha! Uh -huh. Well, maybe you weren't listening when uh, you were asked to be kinder to a brother or a sister or somebody who needed you? Huh? What? Your brother's mean to you. Maybe he should be here. <laughs> Okay, maybe you weren't listening when your teacher announced some chores, some, uh, some homework assignments. Man, you're really good, you're really good, you, you do. I, I can't find any, I can't find any imperfections with you. Everything you say is good. Well, you see kids, we can all be great listeners when we want to, or some of us. The hard part is that sometimes we don't want to listen when we are asked to do so. So, as a member of our Christian family, you have been asked certain things like being kind to your friends and neighbors, sharing with one another, being respectful of one another, giving to those who have less than you, being obedient to your parents and teachers, and listening with your heart to those who need you and to love one another. So, have you been listening? Have you been listening? Yes, and have you been listening? Good, 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 good. Well, there are just a few things you have been asked to do as one of God's ministers. See, I'm calling you God's ministers. You're getting up there. Here on earth. And if you've really been listening, I mean listening with your heart, then you won't forget these things. You too can become a great listener, not just when it comes to your favorite music or favorite singer, but also when it comes to the most important things. I have a little story for you, okay? This little girl was watching TV in her bedroom that sounds familiar to you, dear. <laughs> when her mother called, Michelle, come to dinner. But the girl didn't answer. Her mother called again a little later, Michelle, come to dinner. Again, no response. Finally, the mother shouted, Michelle, come to dinner. Afraid that her mother was angry, the little girl ran out of her room in the kitchen and said, Oh, I'm so sorry, Mommy. I didn't hear you when you called me the first two times. <laughs> of course, that little girl really did hear her mother, but she didn't want to admit it. So this week, as we go to school, and spend time with our family and friends, let's not be like the girl in that story. 
Instead, let's all try to be good listeners, especially to the important lessons God has asked us to learn. So that's my lesson today. So now we will sing, Are You a Shepherd? And the words are printed in the bulletin. verses 8 to 12, and John 10, verses 11 to 18. Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, answered them, leaders of the people and elders, if we are being questioned today about the good deed done to the lame man and how he was healed, then you should all know, and all the people of Israel should know, that this man stands here before you completely well through the power of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead. Jesus is the one of whom the scripture says, the stone that you, the builders, despised turned out to be the most important of all. Salvation is to be found through him alone. In all the world, there is no one else whom God has given who can save us. And John, John 10, verses 11 to 18, which is about Jesus, the Good Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd who is willing to die for the sheep. When the hired man, who is not a shepherd, and does not own the sheep, sees a wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The hired man runs away because he is only a hired man and does not care about the sheep. I am, not, I am the good shepherd, as the Father knows, and I know the Father. In the same way, I know my sheep and they know me, and I'm willing to die for them. There are other sheep which belong to me, 
that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them too. They will listen to my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I am willing to give up my life in order that I may receive it back again. No one makes my life, no one takes my life away from me. I give it up of my own free will. I have the right to give it up and I have the right to have it back. This is what my Father has commanded me to do. Thanks be to God.
require it, well done. And thank you, Sarah, for the scripture reading. The famous German play, Faust, was inspired by a 16th century magician who claimed to be in league with the devil. In one version of the legend, Faust makes a pact with Satan. He sells his soul not for wealth, power, or immortality, but because he is overcome by his inability to discover the meaning of life. Consequently, he bargains with the devil to reveal it to him in exchange for his very soul. In the play, there is a very moving scene in which Faust is in a state of final despair. He is so frustrated and discouraged about his problem with life that he decides to commit suicide. He is about to drain from a beaker of poison when suddenly he hears a tremendous choir singing beautiful Eastern music. And he gets through to him. He drops the poison and begins to weep. As the author says beautifully, his tears gush forth and earth takes back her child. That is precisely what happens when we remain faithful to the blessed community of Christ. The glory of Easter music, resurrection music, breaks into our darkness and despair, and we drop the poison of fear and doubt. We accept and embrace the resurrection power of God's love. Many of us can identify with people who have grown tired of just existing to the point where they don't want to continue. But somewhere deep within, we know that life is more than just existing. We know that life is more than mere survival. We know that our daily routine should be more than dull, empty, lifeless. The Gospel of John celebrates how God's presence in Jesus Christ makes it possible for us to move from just existing into the abundance of life. In biblical terms, abundant life means eternal life. The dominant theme in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke is that Christ's coming makes it possible for us to enter the kingdom of God, that is, to come under the rule of God. But in John's gospel, the kingdom of God is mentioned only once or twice. Instead, John speaks of eternal life. It is John's way of describing the reality of the kingdom of God. John is talking about the fullness of life, the wholeness of life or the abundance of life, the word Jesus himself used. As they were leaving church one Sunday, a man confided to his friend that he had insomnia. The friend said that he had no trouble getting to sleep. Really? The first man inquired. Do you count sheep? No, the other replied. I talk to the shepherd. Throughout John's Gospel, different figures describe how Jesus comes to offer us eternal life. He is the bread of life, the light of the world, the way, the truth, and the life who guides and protects us. And in today's Gospel lesson, the Good Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus says in John 10, verse 11. Jesus lays down his life in order that we may have life and have it more abundantly. The good shepherd 
has come to lead us out of bondage, to liberate us from the drudgery of mere existing by offering us new life in spirit and in truth. A group of botanists were searching the Alps for a rare flowers. A magnificent specimen was spotted on a small ledge of rock that could only be reached with a lifeline. The job was far too dangerous for the inexperienced botanist. So they summoned a local shepherd boy familiar with the terrain and offered him several gold coins to be lowered by a rope and retrieve the rare specimen. Although the boy desperately wanted the coins, he feared the job was too dangerous. Several times, he peered over the edge of the cliff, but he couldn't see any safe way of getting to the flower. Besides, he would have to place his trust in the hands of strangers holding his lifeline. Suddenly, the boy had an idea. He left the group for a few moments, then returned holding the hand of a much older man. The shepherd boy then ran excitedly to the edge of the cliff and said to the botanist, you can tie the rope under my arms now. I'll go into the canyon as long as you let my father hold the rope. Immediately after World War II, the Allied armies gathered up many hungry, homeless children and placed them in large camps. There, the children were abundantly fed and cared for. However, at night, they did not sleep well. They seemed restless and afraid. Finally, a psychologist hit on a solution. After the children were put to bed, they each received a slice of bread to hold. The children could have more if they were still hungry, but this slice was not to be eaten. It was just to hold. The slice of bread produced marvelous results. The child would go to sleep, subconsciously feeling they would have something to eat tomorrow. That assurance gave the child a calm and peaceful rest. And for them, the peace and calm of a brighter tomorrow was truly the best thing since sliced bread. We read in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Instinctively, the sheep knows that the shepherd has made plans for tomorrow's grazing. It knows the shepherd made ample provision for it today and will do so tomorrow. The psalmist is telling us that the sheep lies down in its fold with the piece of bread, figuratively speaking. In the city that was once Constantinople, a visitor to the mosque of Saint Sophia stood quietly for a time marveling at the breathtaking architecture. The mosque was once a Christian church, but long since it had been converted into a Muslim place of worship. All the Christian symbols had been wiped out or covered with Arabic lettering. As the visitor stood there, he looked up at the dome and his heart almost stood still. He grabbed another traveler by the arm and said excited, excitedly, Look, look, he's coming back. Jesus is coming back. He could see that the top layer of paint was wearing thin and the figure of Christ was beginning to show through again. There may be times when your faith seems to disappear under the busyness of our modern world. There may be times when God's promise to be with you always seems to be wearing thin. There may be times when it seems your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is in hiding. 
In other words, there may be times when you feel that only a miracle can save you and you cry for help. Come to me, Jesus implores us. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. There's nothing better than Jesus' assurance not even sliced bread. He doesn't leave anyone out. He doesn't care if you live in a castle or a shack, if you're a celebrity or an unknown, young or old. He doesn't care what part of the planet Earth you live on. Whoever you are, wherever you are, Jesus, the bread of life, the light of the world, the way to truth, and their life who guides and protects us will answer your call. Amen. Let us now sing Safe in the Arms of Jesus in the Song of the Gospel number 161. sing with them. The words are printed in the bulletin. Bye. 
Let us pray. Gracious and forgiving God, we thank you that when we wander, you seek us. That when we stumble and fall, you lift us up. And that when we falter or begin to get lost, you call us by name. Help us, dear Lord, to remain close by you, to keep your presence before our eyes, and to hold your word in within our heart. Loving God and giving God, you provide all that we need and protect us from all that seeks to destroy us. We know that we are safe in your care. We find rest in you. We renew our strength in you. We thank you and we pray to you now at this time for others who need you. We pray, O oh God, for those who are in authority and who are elected to positions of power, we ask your wisdom. For those who lead either by right of birth or personality or office, we ask a heart of love and acceptance. And for those who have suffered for so long and who now face the awesome responsibility that comes with freedom, we ask a justice that is full of mercy. We also hold before you this day those who have named before you in our time of sharing. Grant unto these we have named and to all your church new life in the name of Christ. Make us a peaceful and joyful people who live the love we have received from your hands. We ask it through Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Amen. Our closing hymn today is, He Lives, it's printed in your bulletin. Can all stand, please?
invited to the Memorial Hall for coffee and some goodies to eat. <laughs>